Shar Margolis, Shar Communications Incorporated, and Shar Vision LLC do not endorse or offer for any purpose but entertainment the views of any guest or other expert on Shar Vision or UBN. I knew things before they happened from the time I was a child. At the age of eight, I saw a spirit at the foot of my bed and didn't know what it was. And in my 20s, I finally realized I had a special ability that could help others. I have learned that love never dies. There is a spirit world that can communicate with us, and we all have the gift of intuition. Join me, and together we will explore the possibilities of the unknown from beyond and more. This is Shar Vision. Boo! <laughs> Today, we're talking about a scary movie, and it's called Paranormal Activity. And I am, it's, it's number five, it's called Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension. And I'm so excited because the star of the show is here. And her name is Britt Shaw. Britt, um, I'm, I'm honored that you're here. And I, I've known Britt for quite a while, like a few years. And, um, but this is the first time we've really ever chatted on Char Vision. And I want to find out the behind the scenes things that went on in this scary movie because I know for a fact when I've had TV shows and I've had TV shows in the Netherlands we had like crazy paranormal things go on like 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 electrical things would go on and off and lights would flash on and off things wouldn't work so I want to know if things happened to you like that so Britt thanks for being here of course I'm happy to be here uh, and um, so was it was it scary doing this movie Yes, um, I love that. That's that's probably the number one question that I get from anybody. Is is it scary? Yeah. And if it was scary for me to film, I feel like it's scary for you to see it. So yes, it was scary filming it. And and can can we show a little clip? Do you mind if we show a little clip of? Of you? course. Okay. Thank you. Let's let's see that. Katie, Christy, I want you to concentrate. Concentrate? I need you to concentrate. She's like in some sort of like trance state or something. They're inducing a trance. Where'd you get this? From a box of like 80 VHS tapes the old homeowners left in the basement. This tape is like 20 years old. Tell me what you see. I think I see two men. What are your names? Ryan. Mike. We're the Fleege brothers. Brothers. Daddy, I can't sleep. What's going on? I hear noises in my room. You hear noises in your room? Okay, well, Daddy will go up and make sure everything's... Hey! Bless you. What the hell? Did you see that? We gotta find more of those tapes. Look at this camera. And there's, like, obviously something going on here. It's got all these knobs you can adjust. Oh, my God. Honey, oh, cool. that's so big. It's a This is weird. I'm seeing something, and there's this thing that I'm picking up with the camera. What the hell is that? Oh! I think this camera can see things you cannot see with the naked eye. This is so cool. I've heard of spirit photography before. I've just never seen it in person. What are you doing in here? Is she talking backwards? Is she saying Bloody Mary? Whatever's happening is connected to the taste. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. She has never tried anything like this before. How did she get up that high? He's gonna take me away. <gasps> Tell me. What if someone conspired for us to be in this house? This is no coincidence, and I believe she's part of a prophecy. <laughs> There's something behind you. So how did you sleep after filming this? God, that's scary. Uh, I know, it's such a good trailer. Um, I mean, when you're in it doing it, you just kind of have to 
take your mind away from set when you go home and then come back to it because while you're filming it, you really are physically in it and you're thinking these things. And so there was a couple times when it would come home with me and I definitely thought twice about a couple things, but um, I mean, did you have nightmares? A few. Yeah, I have, there was this, we, we shot this, this one day, it was really scary. I can't tell you too much about it because I don't want to give away the scares, but okay. um, there's a hallway in the house and uh, I, no one, no one told me that this event, we were going to film this part today. And so I was walking up the stairs to go shoot the scene right before this one and this thing was right there and just scared <gasps> the bejesus out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, it's so real. It's so real. It felt like so real to me. And that night I, I left set and I was walking to my car and I, it, it only happened once, but I just like felt something with me and I kept like looking behind, like doing it like, you know. They so you felt like an energy was with you. So with now, me, do you think like it, for it, sure. Wait, okay, but wait, was it an, a real intuitive spirit kind of energy or was it just your fears playing havoc with you what do you think well i like to think that i felt a real energy there but i bet after you. shooting a scary movie all day right i imagine that it was probably my my mind but being maybe fearful. maybe it was a guardian angel trying to save you and help you you never know it felt like a demon it felt like a demon yeah oh my god no, I, I was, was trying was not angel. to go there with you <laughs> okay no no I just it was just one of those moments where well it it felt like it came with me you know I teach I've been doing this for over 40 years so you weren't even born yet mm -hmm. way way before you were born and the one thing I've learned in the work that I do it because I communicate with spirits and I teach people about intuition is that they're in the spirit world, just like in everyday life, there are good and evil energies. Right. So you, when you say there, there was a negative energy around you, I believe that there was something trying to play havoc with you, but I know you and I know that you're not possessed and there's no evil around you. I mean, I know you. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, did, did anyone else freak out while they were filming this? Like, did anyone else have any like personal experiences besides you? Um. Not that I know of, really. No, I. That you know. No. Of. Not that I know that of. That you know of, but you definitely felt a presence. Yeah, I did. And then, so to finish my story, so that was like the one night that I go home, and then just by crazy chance, in the middle of the night, I'm woken up to the TV blaring static. And this has never happened in my life. Like normally, the if if like a power shortage happens, then it goes to blue. You know, it comes on, and then it's just a blue screen. This was static, as loud like the volume to the highest, and it was the exact same night that I walked home and had that. And I, I'm 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 in the house and I'm going. Wait, oh my God, was the TV? Oh did the TV on go go on by itself? Yes, or by itself. Well, I mean, unless yeah, it went on Toby by itself. Would, turned it on. I don't know. Well, I, I, when I did my shows in the Netherlands, I stayed in a in a in an old old town hall where that used they used to hang people in the courtyard, and I, my TV would go on by itself. So I believe you that you had some kind of energy there. That's did you, crazy. Did you feel that energy when you were in? The, I did. I did. Did you but, talk to them? I did. I did. I I actually. What did you say? Well, I asked me them some to pointers. please go away because I need to go to sleep. Well, I always put myself in a white light of protection because I, I, you never know who's going to be coming around you. So you don't want anything to ever attach itself to you. I know. So I really so don't. So do you pray? <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, good. So the best thing to do is just put a white light of protection around you. Imagine you're lit up like the sun and you're so bright that if anyone were to look at you, their eyes would hurt. And you take those lights and you swirl them around faster and faster and faster and tell, tell them to go away. The one thing that I know for sure and that I teach people is that no one, nothing, not a living person, not a spirit has power over us unless we give them the power to do so, unless we give them permission. So if you don't like it, you say, get out of here. You're not welcome here. And, 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 and mean it. And if you're having a harder time getting rid of them, you use sage. 
Yeah. Like the Indians did. You light the sage stick and you go around and you say, you know, you do a whole thing, go away, you're not welcome here. My neighbors think I'm crazy. I do it every New Year's Eve when I'm in Michigan and I'm 10 acres of land and they think, mm -hmm. I know they know, I, they think I'm nuts. But I do, <laughs> I protect, I, I, I stage everything. And if you ever feel that kind of negativity, well, you can always call me if you ever need anything, but 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 do the sage thing yeah, because it really, it really works. So what's different about this paranormal activity than the other ones? This is number five, right? Yeah, yes. Um, and this one is the most exciting one because it is. Because you're in it. Obviously. Um, <laughs> I think so. I'm going to watch it because you're in it. <laughs> um, but this is the final chapter. So it's been oh. such an amazing franchise and I've had the pleasure of getting to know everyone behind it at, from PA1. And I met Oren Pelly who brought this to life wow. and he's just had such a cool roller coaster ride with all these films and figuring out the story and and who these who these people are and who Katie and Christy are and, and who this this demon is and and with this film what is so Do different we find out who the demon is Yes. Yes. Uh, you do. You know who it is. You just haven't seen him before. And in our film, we'll we'll let you in on that little secret. And I don't want to give too much away. I don't want you to give I too much you... away. But I really am looking forward to seeing that. And so, yeah. so, so, I have a feeling about you. I have a feeling that this is this is, and I know you've been you're you're a popular actress, and I know you've been well known doing so many different roles and so many different TV and movies and things, but I know, I have a feeling that you're going to be doing more things because this is going to help catapult things. But what, do they kill you in this? Or I can't tell you, I can't say. Okay, I'm not going to say anything. Okay, let, la, 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 la. I don't know, I didn't see the movie, so I, and I'm not being psychic. But is, is that why all the, because I was thinking maybe all the other stars were killed so they couldn't come back into the new one. Or do spirits come in? Do they, do they ever have spirits come in from the, the old um, movies to come in to talk to people, like, as characters? Well, um, I can't tell you okay. that. Okay, okay. I'm not going to stop being psychic. No, I just, I feel like um, because it's a franchise that from the first one to this one, it's a storyline that they answer questions for, and so the fans on this one will get their questions answered. Well, where does your character fit into the paranormal world? Um, my character is Emily, and then the, the Chris Murray, who plays my husband, Ryan, and then we have a daughter, Leela. We move into a house, and we discover that there's box of tapes there, and there's this camera. And within finding this camera, turning it on, thinking it's just this old camera that you'd find, you know, yeah. in the 80s, and it's like this huge thing that right. it would just be, oh, let's see if it works. And uh, we end up being able to see paranormal activity, actual paranormal activity through the camera. And that's going to be the 3D element. That's incredible. So, yeah, it's incredible. I've seen some of the effects of it. It's insane. I think everyone is going to be blown away with how cool and of a concept that Paramount has done with this. Yeah, but the writer has quite the imagination. but. I, th I think that 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 the truth is very close to fiction in our world. I think there, that it's just one little megasecond away from, because look at you even had your TV go on in the middle of the night by itself. I, th I think I told white, my brain it, it was it, a power outage shortage. Yeah, but I don't think so. I think it's because you were dealing with this subject matter. Yeah. And, and and later on in the show, we've got a, a professional demonologist and paranormal paranormal investigator who's going to talk to us about this world, this other so, world. It's so interesting to me, and I know so many right. people have have dealt with that in in their lives. I mean, it has never personally happened to me, but there is evil in this world, and it comes in different forms. And people have stories that other people need to listen to because. It, it's out there. It's real. Mm -hmm. and do you believe in demonic possession? I believe that, like I said, I believe that it exists in one form or another. It's never happened to me, but I know of stories of people who've been affected by it. So 
which I would love to hear if you have been. I think that you should tweet me if you're listening right now to our yeah. hashtag, which is what is that? Hashtag paranormal activity. Hashtag the ghost dimension. And then what's yours? And um, what is mine? At Charvision. At, at Charvision. Dot com. You can email What if us. we did like hashtag Sharvision and then yeah. tell us about any experiences that you've had? Well, I, think, I would love I to know. I think they have to do hashtag psychic medium Shar. I think that's 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 psychic the one. Medium yeah, Char. Psychic hashtag. medium Char. Do but, that one, and then we can. I would love to to read about it and retweet some. That would so, be like definitely. amazing. Oh, my mine is Brit Shaw underscore X. So it's B R I T S H A W underscore X. Okay, you got that. Mm -hmm. And this comes out October 23rd, right? Yes. Or this is, this is airing. Oh, this is it. This is airing. Okay, we're, we're, we're taping this ahead of time, everybody. So, you know, we're always honest on Char Vision. So, um, so it's airing, and we want you to go to the theater and watch this. Is this going to be international then? Yes. yes. Wow. Worldwide. It's worldwide. Mm hmm that is really exciting. Yeah, they have a huge fan base, so I think everyone is just going to be super excited and happy to see this this movie. It's it's really good. So this is going to be my first experience and I'm happy that you're going to be sharing this with me because on the phone uh -huh. we have someone named Tony Spira and he is the one who who's a paranormal investigator and an expert in demonology. And are you, are you there Tony? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Hi. Can Hi, you Tony. talk him louder cuz I can't Hi. hear Tony at all. How are you guys? I a lot louder. How are you guys? Oh, great, Tony. Good. Thank you so much. Where is he? Like Where, in there or he's, in there? He's he's in, there. There. he's in one of the headsets, I think. Oh. Yeah, he's he's in his own Crazy. dimension. Crazy. Um, so Tony, do you want to tell us? Uh, okay, well, I know that um, you worked with Ed Warren and psychic Lorraine Warren, and they were from um, the Conjure. Conjuring. Conjuring, Correct. that's right. Such Correct. a good movie. Good thing you're here. And so, Correct. I'm an expert. And so tell, tell us, tell us what, what, your, what, what your role is, what you, what you do best. Well, uh, I am a psychic investigator, uh, Char, as Ed was, and Lorraine, of course, is, and also experienced in the area of demonology as well, just like Ed Warren was. I've worked with Ed and with Lorraine for, well, probably before you guys were born. I mean, in 1981, I started with Ed. So, uh, before Lorraine, she was born. In Char, too. Char is just now who, 21. I, yeah, right. I don't know who's on the line, but, uh, you know, a long time. So, so, so since the early, early 80s, I've been doing it. I'm married to their daughter, Judy. Mm. And uh, that's how I got involved, when I met Judy. And then she introduced me to her parents, you know, Ed and Lorraine, when they were lecturing one day at University of Connecticut back in the, actually 1980. And uh, then I started to, you know, visit the house and then ask Ed and Lorraine a lot of questions, got more and more intrigued, and then started to go on lectures with them, then on cases with them as well. And, and they were the only ones that the Catholic Church sanctioned to do this, aren't they? Well, Ed was one of only seven recognized demonologists in the nation back then. You know, mm -hmm. Back in the early 50s and 60s, <clears throat> nobody spoke about demons and devils very much. But Ed was one of only a handful of demonologists. And the other six out of the seven, Ed was the seventh, the other six were clergy. Ed was the only lay, they call it lay demonologist, in other words, a non-clergyman who was also mm -hmm. recognized as a, demon, a religious demonologist. Hmm. And, and how, how would you define paranormal activity? <clears throat> it's any activity that we can't explain. In other words, there is paranormal activity that's brought about by supernatural means, which could be by good means. In other words, you know, God is a supernatural being. Mm -hmm. uh, if you <clears throat> had a uh, son or daughter or boyfriend over in the war, overseas and one night you're laying in bed and all of a sudden you wake up and you see a vision of that soldier or or sailor whoever it is a vision of your your son or daughter at the foot of the bed and then it disappears yeah and then later on you find out that that soldier that son or daughter had been killed that is not a haunting that would be something that you would classify as something beautiful 
it's supernatural. Right. But but it's like a visitation apparition, we would call it. And that we would call that a gift from God. He's letting you know that your son or daughter is, is alive still in the afterlife. And so that I agree. is a supernatural paranormal activity, which is good. Right. But there's, there's also paranormal activity that we call preternatural or negative activities, such as uh, your guest, your, your uh, actress guest uh, spoke about when she was on her way home and she had this feeling of dread and this feeling of, she said she thought it was a demon. <clears throat> you know, once you experience a demonic feeling or an evil entity, it's something you really can't explain in words, but you know it's evil. You can and, just feel it. And what would and you I'm suggest, sure. what would you suggest if, if, from what she went through or what somebody else should do? Well, what I would suggest anyone to do uh, when they're in a dangerous situation, in that Run. situation might even be uh, <laughs> filming, uh, filming paranormal activity. Mm -hmm. Filming itself, you're giving recognition to the other side. Right. In other words, you're, you're drawing it to you. Uh, do you remember like when you were in high school and you had a fight with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and all that night before school you're saying to yourself, I don't want to run into Joey. I'm so mad at him. I don't want to see a Joey ever again. And then you go to school and you're on your way to homeroom. You're around the corner. First person you run into is Joey. Mm -hmm. It's because you were thinking about him, giving such recognition. It's and you, you manifested him. Yeah, and you manifested that transaction to happen. So mm -hmm. you draw things by talking about it, by thinking about it, by reenacting things. So you may be drawing activity to the set itself. So, so I believe her when she said on the way home she felt something. I believe it. I believe um, it too. The way to protect yourself is almost like you said before. You call it the white light of protection and so do we. But I call it a Christ light or God's light of protection around your entire aura. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. everyone here uh, it's on this earth who's alive has a, an aura that's generated by God. God created everything. Everything that's alive, trees, plants, animals, people, have an aura around their body. And it's like a fingerprint. Everybody's is different. Everybody's is mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. And an evil entity, when, he try, when it tries to attack, it wants to attack, but it's got to get through that aura. Mm -hmm. And people are born with a perfect aura. But mm -hmm. through activities, through things in their lifetime, that aura may degenerate. In other okay. words, they may have a chink in their aura. So the less <laughs> attention we give that energy, the better off we all are. Yes, because the less recognition. But, the hard, but, but that's an easy thing to say and a hard thing to do. It, if you exactly. Went home, if you went home one night and you saw a ghost, mm -hmm. all you're going to think about is that ghost. And I hope I don't see it again. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm scared. That ghost is going to be around. I'm frightened. You're, you're drawing it by that, by that recognition. But let me get back to the auras for one second. Okay. You, have a, you might have a chink in that aura. It might be from heavy drug use. It might be from alcoholism. It might be from mental dysfunction, you know, like mental illness. We don't know. So you have a, a weakness in that aura. That's where an evil entity would try to attack through that weakness of your aura. But mm -hmm. it can't get through the white light. So if you envision yourself... Like you were saying, close your eyes and envision yourself in that glowing white light, mm -hmm. a halo of light, which is like a suit of armor for your aura. Mm -hmm. If you do that and ask God to protect you from anything evil or negative or otherworldly, he will. You have to say it, of course, with faith. You don't just mumble the words. You and you have to know it and believe faith. it, right? Pardon me? You have to know it and believe it. Know it and believe it. If you know it and believe it, God will never forsake you. Remember, God is the creator. He mm. created you. He's not gonna, he didn't create you for no reason. He created you, and he wants to help you and, and, and make you, now, you know, a good is, person. Now, is demonic possession real? Yes. Yes, it is. <clears throat> okay, I think it is too, yeah. but I wanted to know your, your view of it. Tell us, tell us about demonic possession and, like, we all sometimes feel spirits and sometimes good ones and sometimes bad ones, right. but... It, Mm -hmm. A demonic yeah. possession is literally when someone is inside someone, right, and takes them over? Uh, a demonic possession is when a s demonic spirit mm -hmm. actually enters the human body. And that's how they go, through that shrink in the aura. Mm -hmm. They look for a we they attack you 
on your weakest level. So in other words, your weakness is alcohol. It may encourage you to drink more. It may obsess your thoughts. Go get a drink. You know, okay, one drink's not going to hurt me. And you go back to drinking. It attacks you on your weakest level, and then it attacks you trying to get through that aura and overcome your body. And why it does that is very simple. It just doesn't do it for fun and games. It wants to attack a person and get to them because it wants to mock God's creation. Mm-hmm. The demonic hates you, hates me, because we're created in God's image, and that's a hated image to the mm-hmm. demonic. Anything they could do to deceive, to criti- criticize, to, to mock, just like a, an incubus attack or a succubus attack, which is an attack on a female or a male at night, while they're in bed, uh, sexually and physically. It wants to mock God's creation. That's why it would rape a person. Do you have a question That's for Tony? Go ahead. Um, Sorry, Tony. Do you, have, do you have any recent stories you could tell us about someone that came to you that felt that they had something going yeah, on inside? Yeah, well, you know, let me just preface it by saying this. Demonic possession is very rare. True possession is very rare. There are a lot of people who think they're under possession, they're not. If you called me up on the phone and said, hey, I think I'm demonically possessed, why? Why do you think that? Well, because I I say crazy things and and I do stupid things and I I smell this odor around me. That would be half of the country. Most people who are possessed Mm -hmm. do not even know it. When their body gets overtaken by a demonic entity, they're 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 unaware. They're not aware of it. It's very, very rare. It's not, most people have their thoughts oppressed and they're obsessed. In other words, oppression would set in. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning stages. A lot of times it doesn't get to a demonic, Mm. full-blown possession. What are the stages you go through to get rid of a demon out of someone? To get rid of a demon out of someone, it's through a rite of exorcism, through what we call in the Catholic faith, now there's other faiths that have the faith that have their own exorcisms, but the Catholic faith has what's called the ritual Romanum, which is the highest rite of exorcism in the Catholic faith. And it is a casting out of devils and demons through prayer and through certain Latin rituals. Well could you so, like give us a setup of like okay, the they're they're take here's somebody who's possessed there's yeah. a priest, there's you. Yeah. What exactly goes on in the room? Okay. What goes on in the room is that a priest is going to do the actual exorcism. We would just be bystanders, perhaps protectors of the priest. Have you seen the exorcism? Because you don't know what's going to happen with that, with that uh, person. See. I cannot really perform an exorcism. Either can anyone else who's not really an ordained Wait, member. Wait, Britt Brit has a question. What? I said, haven't you yeah. seen The Exorcism? Oh, yeah. You mean, the have movie. I seen one? Oh, the, yeah, but I've seen real ones. Oh. I've seen real ones, actually. Well, yeah. that's I wasn't going to say that tonight, but what about children? <laughs> what about well, children? Because, see, you can perform an exorcism on a person. Uh, there's a lot of exorcisms that are performed in a person not really possessed because they're mis- misdiagnosed as being possessed. But say they are really possessed. It has to be done by a very religious, a very pious and holy individual. Not that I'm not, <laughs> not that Ed wasn't. But he wasn't or not or an ordained minister, or right. an ordained priest, so he couldn't really perform it. You have to have someone who's really, really highly trained and very, very pious and goes through certain rituals themselves, mm-hmm. like fasting. They fast for days before they do this. It's a fight. It's a fight with an enemy. Is what they're up against. I, it's like a I box know someone. Can I ask you a question? Pardon me? Can I ask you yeah. a question? I know sure. someone long time ago who did an exorcism, and mm-hmm. I believe that that spirit went inside her. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is that possible? Yeah. Like it went, she yeah. took it In out of someone words, the else? Per- the, per- the person did an exorcism, and then the spirit came to her? Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen that? That can happen. That can happen. That's why it's very dangerous when you do an exorcism, even for a priest. But what that is called is a soul victim. Oh. In other words, a soul victim. In other words, here's an example so you'll understand what I, exactly what I mean. You and me 
are walking down the street. All of a sudden, two thugs come up, and they start to pull at your, your pocketbook, they try, and they start to hit you in the face. Mm -hmm. I come to your aid. I try to stop it. They attack me and beat me up. Right. I'm, I'm a sole victim. Same thing would happen with that woman who's trying to help a person, mm -hmm. but by doing so, she gets attacked herself because she wasn't protected. That's what happened. I'm, I'm sure that's what happened to her. And what do you d define hell as? What do I define hell as? Mm -hmm. I, I define hell <laughs> as a separation from God. In other words, say heaven is the most beautiful place on, not on earth, the most beautiful place you'll ever be. It's right. paradise. There's no sickness. There's no, there's no uh, um, anger. There's no war. Everything, everybody's healthy and in love. And you, all your relatives are there. That say that's heaven, and God is there, and you're performing great duties. Hell would be the separation from that. In other words, perhaps you could even get a glimpse of it, but you can't go to it. You are in either a purgatory state or a hellish state. I wouldn't say it's fire and brimstone, because my belief, even though I'm Catholic, my belief is God is a merciful God. He's not going to have you burning in a place with fire looking at your heels uh, for eternity because you missed mass or because, you know, you stole something when you're 10 years old and you never confessed to it. I don't think so. I think it's, I think he weighs all of that, but I don't think it comes to where you're just in hell forever. If you accept God as your Savior before you pass away and you really try to change your ways, then you're going to be accepted sooner or later. It may take you a thousand years to get there. You may be in a purgatory state. You have to work off some things, Have but... Have I think you you'll get there. Have you seen Paranormal Activity? Have you seen the movie, any of the movies? Yeah, I, seen, I, I saw Paranormal Activity 1. Maybe I saw 2. I know I saw and, Paranormal Activity and what do you 1. It was very good. What, is, what do you feel the effect is of watching these movies? Well, the effect, uh, what I like about those movies, like the Paranormal Activity movies, is they're actually the way things go. Like in Paranormal That's Activity right. 1. They're that's real. The okay, you're saying they're really, real. Yeah. They're real. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, it's almost like reality. It's almost like that's how a house starts to become uh, oppressed, and people start to become obsessed and oppressed, and things slowly start to build, and they're not sure, and they're, 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 they're pointing it off as something else. Then all mm -hmm. of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. That is how a lot of houses are. And the way they did, I thought it was going to be like a, you know, a really like facetious, not right. a good movie, and I didn't want to watch it. And somebody said, "Why don't you watch Paranormal Activity mm -hmm. One? Go ahead, just watch it." And I went and rented it, and I watched it, and it is a good. It's very good the way they did it. It's almost like the person who did it or wrote it knows a lot about Paranormal Activity, which is they they which is great up. because because this is Paranormal Activity Five, so he really must be like right on with everything. <laughs> And, and Britt, yeah, how, how do you I'm feel about you. it? Was, uh, the first one really surprised me as being so, so well done. You okay, need to watch all the other ones. Yeah, two. I think I'm going to watch two, three, four, then when five comes out October 23rd, which you're, is today. Yeah. I'm going to <laughs> you're, go, you're going to the movie theater tonight. <laughs> yeah, tonight. Yeah, I'm going to watch it tonight. I'm going to go see Everybody's it the going tonight. tonight. And I'm going to watch Britt in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Movie. and you should and, take uh, that doll that's at the house with you. No Ooh. kidding. Ooh. Kidding. It's in the safe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, don't, it, don't it, unlock it. The movies, those movies are worth watching. I, if it were me, as a parent, if I were starting out in the paranormal investigatory world, or if I was really interested in the paranormal, what I would do is I would binge watch all five. I would go to one, two, three, four, five, because they seem to have a pattern, and that pattern seems to be just a little bit more advanced than each movie. Yeah. So you learn a little bit, you learn a little bit more each time. So those, those are a good basis to watch those five. Plus the conjuring, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. So, when, do you have another question for him? No. Okay. When when kids go out for Halloween. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does that stir up energetically with good spirits, bad spirits, trickster energies? What does that do? Well, I'll tell you. All Hallows Eve. That's the night when the dead supposedly come out of their graves. When the dead roam, the, uh, the spirit roam, roam. But, We're just doing a little yeah, background. Yeah, but I'll tell you, um, it's done in fun, right? It's done where kids don't even know what they're really, why they're even trick-or-treating. So, like I said, they're not really drawing it to them. 
all they're doing is dressing up, and it's like a costume party. Right. So it was not like a ritual. If it were a ritual where they're saying certain prayers and incantations and hoping to see ghosts, you know, they go out specifically to catch ghosts and see them, that's a different story. That starts to, that gets into the area of conjuring and incantations. So you, you do something, just like watching the paranormal activity movies. You're watching it as entertainment, yes. Right. But you're also watching it to learn a few things about the paranormal as a student of the paranormal. That's okay. Reading a book on the paranormal, that's fine. But it's when you start to dabble in occult practices like, I want to replicate what happened in that movie. Mm -hmm. I want a ghost to appear in that mirror. Because Ouija I boards and Ouija boards and things yeah, like wanna, that are I not good. I want crystal Nancy. I want something to appear on my TV screen. Yeah, because I want something to have. I want to. I want to communicate with my grandfather on a Ouija board. Now you're asking questions of the right. unknown realm and right. asking them. You're inviting them over. Right. Well, now, you when, you I have been it, so was, educational to us. Yes. You've been so helpful to us. I am so grateful, Tony, that you're here and. <laughs> And I, I think, really can feel your goodness and your energy and that you really do help people. And I'm, can I refer people to you? Because people call my office all the time and I sure. need somebody. Okay. Well, it's Absolutely. been a pleasure to meet you and I, I hope one day we'll meet in person. Yeah. Very nice good. to meet very, you, Tony. Very good. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. There's one quick thing. When she said the TV went on, that's yeah. the spirit turning the TV on. Yeah, of course. Stop it. It's no, it spirit. is. That's what a spirit, uh, manip, a spirit can learn to manipulate energy like that. Yeah, well, they work normally, at it. But normally, see, it's just, it's just a, a lot of times it's a human spirit. Right. You don't really know. You have to look at all factors. But tell her not to worry about anything. Just envision yourself in the white light. Don't pay any more recognition to things. Right. And I'm doing pray it to God for protection and your protection. You should, if you could see her, she's got her eyes closed and she's doing a Tony. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work and God bless you. Thank you. You're very, Be very well. welcome. Thank you Be very well. much. Okay, you thank you. Oh, oh, my goodness. What did you think of that? Tony's awesome. He is, right? He knows yeah. his stuff. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out who he sounds like, but he sounds exactly like someone I know. You know, I, I, I forgot to say this while he was talking. There's something called the Day of the Dead. Do you know about that? It's, it's, I, I think it's a day after Halloween, or it is day after Halloween. And mm -hmm. the, the Hollywood Forever Cemetery mm -hmm. is open, and people decorate the graves and it's like an amazing experience i went for the first time last year and i i i found this guy and i said what why is why do you guys do this what what's going on here this is profound what he said he said this is the only day of the year that we ask the good spirits and the evil spirits to get along for one day oh wow it gives me goosebumps. Yeah. And wouldn't it be nice if, you know, we could get rid of the evil and have only good, but I always say life runs like a battery. There's always going to be a positive and negative charge. Yeah, it, it's, kind of, it's interesting because um, why is it that no one wants to walk through a graveyard at night if there's, you know, love and good spirit supposed to be there too, right? It's true. I mean, because I'm scared. Would you walk in a graveyard at night? No. By yourself? With someone? Mm. No. No one. <laughs> what if you knew the person that was buried? What if it was someone that had passed on, like a grandparent or someone that you had loved, and they were uh, in there? I don't know. Still know. I don't. I don't know. I just. I'm wondering what is that stigma that attached to it? Is that most people are like, woo? You know what? It's like it's like being in a scary movie. I would think. I've never yeah. been in a scary movie like you. But didn't you like get scared while you were doing the movie? Yeah, of course. I mean, I really, mean, while to that it was all going on and you, like, would yeah. scare yourself? Well, yeah, because it, it, you, you go to that place. And what's cool about the Paranormal Activity franchise is that because it has the found footage quality, we film a lot of it ourselves. Oh, you do? Mm hmm So. So it really is real. Now, he said it's realistic to all the uh, demon, whatever he does, the possessions that he gets rid of. That I call them repossessions, but that's not what it's really called. <laughs> the exorcisms he does. Oh, yeah. He said it's re like very real to 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 truth of what your movies are. I mean, that's amazing to your writer. Who's your Who's the writer? Yeah, Jason Pagan and Andrew Deutschman. Whoa. Are Are they spiritual people? Are they? Um, or do you know? Maybe I have you don't know. no idea. They're just they're awesome writers. Yeah. And, um, 
and yeah. true to life is what he's saying, which is amazing. I can't wait to see this movie. I mean, yeah, I think it's definitely going to be uh, an amazing one to go see, especially since Halloween is next week and everyone yep. wants to kind of get their fix in about like kind of being scared and then walking away and being like, oh, could that happen to me? I'm not sure. And I feel like with this movie, it's just going to blow everyone's minds about how they did it, what happened. We shot so much footage that was made me scared so I figure everyone is gonna go for the same reason and I have be a scared. Yeah, I have a feeling the ratings are gonna go through the roof and I have a feeling this is like a great, great role for you to be in and great for your career. Oh thanks. Yeah, well I, no, it was it was fun to do. It was it was crazy but experience. I also, but but it was people amazing. will also see that you're gifted and you're talented and, and that you can act. Mm -hmm. You're not just a pretty face. <laughs> it, it's yeah. it's it's wonderful. It's it's thank it's, you terrific for you. Thank Are you, you excited? Yes, I'm very excited. I'm just excited to have worked with such a great team of people and Paramount has been amazing with the franchise and mm -hmm. Jason Blum and Blumhouse and Oren and like learning all about it and just feeling that I'm kind of a part of this paranormal family and that I get to be in something that that is so hugely successful that started out with just this guy that didn't even know how to shoot a movie nor edit it or in that's amazing and figured it all out and then that's amazing showing up to set and you're like you you did this because of your vision and we're all a part of it so it's just really cool to be a part of but it's also educational yes I mean if you're gonna because, have spirits yeah. walking behind you when you're walking to your car but seriously because people need to realize that this could happen in real life yeah I mean, no, I definitely maybe. have heard a lot of a lot of stories from people just because I'm I'm in the movie. They'll they'll tell me, and it's just like like I said earlier, it definitely happens to people around. Like, and you, this is what you do this for is, a living. Like, you kind I, of help I do in that I, world. I and I have experienced many things like this. There was, um, I I know someone who had a near death experience where she came back to talk about it, and mm -hmm. she did not see the white light. She did not see God. She did not see Christ. She saw demons, and and she had to come back because she didn't fix what she came here to do. Mm. And I don't know if when she finally did pass over, what happened to her. I'm not sure. But <gasps> that's it, it terrible. Really, but but that's that's why it's so important to live our lives with a conscience and to be positive and to be honest and to use prayer, no matter yeah. what religion we are. What I don't pre preach religion. I I teach positivity and protection. And it's important for all of us to do this. And and I love that when he said, or when I said, put a white light around you. You closed your eyes, <laughs> and, and you and you imagine the I white, about light. That white and, light. And yeah. it's important to do that every day. I yeah. mean, truly every day. So tell us the um, your your Twitter again that we can get to that. Uh, Britt Shaw, B R I T S H A W underscore X. Mm -hmm. and that's my Twitter and my Instagram. Um, so definitely tweet me and then hashtag paranormal activity and hashtag the ghost dimension okay and my question okay and what else and that's good right <laughs> okay now where are you going tonight um are you going to, to the, the movie oh, of course you are are you gonna like like Duh. put a disguise on um i don't know so yeah, i'm gonna dress do you in, think you'll be at the character. grove where are you gonna be okay where let let's stalk her where will you be <laughs> Um, I can't tell you. Maybe I'm just going to show up at a random movie theater. That's a good idea. And then sit like on, in like section G, uh, number 16. Maybe that. Ooh. Aren't they all like labeled? Yeah, I think they are. I just made that up. But yeah, you probably okay. knew that because you're psychic. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> Britt, it, you're just a delight. And oh, it's an honor thanks. to have you here. And I'm so proud of you although I had nothing to do with your career but I'm just happy for you honey. You thought great thoughts. I always have and Positive. I've always because I've always adored you since the day and, I met and you and I'm happy for you and dog. yeah and Sonny he's he like gets rid of all the bad doggy spirits. Yeah well thank you so <laughs> much for having me it's and my pleasure. I just uh, look forward to everyone going to see it because it's it's really awesome. Everybody go to the theater now and go see Paranormal Activity 5. Run and don't look behind you because yeah. you could have a spirit with you. <laughs> Run and don't look behind you. Okay, that's scary already. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for thank being you. here. If you like what you've seen on Char Vision, then go to char.net and book a personal reading with me or join a group reading or 
join one of my workshops where I teach you to be psychic and intuitive. Okay, Emily, thank you for trusting me. I'm excited to read for you. Have you ever had a reading? No, actually, I think this is my first. Good, well, I'm glad that um, your mom is trusting me to read for you. So that's important to me because when a parent trusts me with their kid, it's the greatest compliment, one of the greatest I can get. All right, so um, I just need you to be open-minded about everybody living and deceased and don't blurt out any names. Mm -hmm. If more than one person share the same name or initial, if you could let me know this, your, your messages will go more smoothly. And um, just be open about people living and deceased. And two people may share the same name or initial, and we'll figure it out. Um, I understand that you may have questions, and hopefully I'll answer those before you can even ask them. But sometimes there's things that you will need to know that you don't even realize you need to know, so hopefully I'll get that stuff and we'll, we'll work out, out together. I'm going to say my prayer of protection, and then we'll start. <clears throat> we ask the universal consciousness that holds the highest spiritual power of knowledge, wisdom, and truth to guide and protect us as we communicate with our guides and angels in the spirit world and tap into the wisdom of the universe. We respect this opportunity and take full responsibility to use this not for ego or controlling others, but with the pure intention of spreading love and healing life on this earth and beyond. Um, I, I'm seeing somebody who's a rose. Do you have somebody who's a rose or an Esther? Um, yeah, Esther. Is, is Esther your grandma? Esther is, hold on, I need my mom's help with this. Rose was a great aunt. Mm -hmm. And Miriam Esther was a, um, I think, a great grandmother. Great grandmother, mm -hmm. okay. Because yeah. <clears throat> I'm feeling the energy of old souls coming, gathering around you. Also, do you know Jacob or. Jack or um, yeah, there's a my friend, my oldest friend that I have is named Jack. Jack is is in uh, and you're still close with Jack. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, like, did you know him since you were five or since I was born? Since basically. you were born, okay. Did you used to hold hands when you were little? Mm -hmm. Do you have pictures of you and Jack holding hands? Yes, I see this. What? What went on with the swimming pool or the, the, was there an issue with the swimming pool or swimming? Is there somebody who drowned or was there an issue with the there, swimming pool with you or Jack or something? There is an issue with the swimming pool. Um, I don't know. I was really young. Um, we were helping uh, friends of ours move uh -huh. and um, nobody was watching one of the kids and she had managed to get into the jacuzzi. And um, my mom actually found her there and Did basically she? pulled her out and saved okay, her life. Okay, so she almost drowned. Yeah. Okay. I see this. There, it's almost like your relatives are, even though I'm reading for you, your mom's getting a little bit of this because <laughs> her mom's my producer. <laughs> and um, the lovely Elisa, who's been, you know, God sent to me. And so I, I think that they're bringing out messages about this as well. Now, um, I really feel like you saved a life, though. I, I, your mom. I feel like you really saved a life. I mean, like it was a big blessing. Good. Um, is there, I, I also am seeing somebody with an M. Or do you have family, like on your dad's side, that's an M or an E? Someone else with an E besides Esther. Is there an E deceased? Is it a, is that, is that a male or f a male, a male E? Female. Female E? Okay. On my dad's side? Or no, it's on your side. side. Mm -hmm. Is in, in that name, is there a D in it or an L in that name? There's actually two females with an E, one with a D. Is it, is it E-D? Yes. Like Edith? Yes. Oh, who, Edith, yeah. Who is this? That's Emily's great grandma. Mm -hmm. Your great grandma. Okay. I feel like Edith is here. And I feel like 
Somebody else is here, though, with an E. Is there an Emma or? Oh, like family-wise? Or, or do you have a friend named Emma? Yeah, my other best friend who I've known since I was born is Emma. Oh. They're like soulmates with you. It doesn't mean that they're romantic soulmates. It just right. means like a soulmate is someone who helps our soul to grow. So I feel like they're, and I also feel they're supportive of you. Mm -hmm. They're supportive of you in your work, right? Yeah. Do you pray? Not enough. No. I feel like you're supposed, not that you need to go to a religious establishment, but you're very intuitive and you work with energy a lot. You know, we live in a physical world. We live in an energetic world. And it's important for all of us to keep a white light of protection around you, around us. And I feel like it's very important for you to have more of this. Because even though you have great friends, and they are your friends, and they do support you, there's a lot of jealousy around you. You know that, right? Yeah. And, and I, <laughs> you know, it's like almost a curse in some ways to be beautiful and smart and talented and all the things that you are. But um, I want you to keep that white light of protection around you and anything dark or negative, send it back to where it came from or destroy it. Because you, you're very sensitive and people don't realize how sensitive you are because if somebody looks at you the wrong way, you're almost gonna cry. They don't get it. They think, oh, she's gorgeous and she's thin and she's this and that. And they don't get that you are <clears throat> your insides are as beautiful as your outside. So it's it's hard. It's hard for it's it, it's 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 hard at times. But you you do have a blessed life. And um, now I know logically that you were in your play at school. Mm -hmm. I know that logically. I always say what I know logically. But I also feel, I, I, have you ever considered doing something more with acting, like not just in school, but maybe with commercials or maybe with acting, acting, like TV, theater, movies? I'd like to, but I just, I don't feel like it's practical. And so I kind of get hung up on like. But you're very good behind the scenes as well, right? Yeah. Do you want to be like a director or a producer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like you could do both. And I feel like you should never block yourself. Do you almost not want to do it because you don't want the attention? Yeah. <laughs> like you don't want to be the, in the spotlight. You don't mm -hmm. want all that attention. You want to, and you don't want people to go, oh, pointing at you. Like, look at her. She's beautiful. Look at her. She's talented. Look at, you want to kind of stay in the, behind the scenes. But I really feel that probably as you get older, you'll probably, I, I feel like you will be involved behind the scenes in tech, uh, media, uh, movies, theater, whatever, TV, media, whatever. But I feel like there will be opportunities to be out there as well. And I feel you put your own block up, and I don't think it's fair for you to put a block up for yourself. Now, has your mother had a discussion with you like this? Um, yeah, several. <laughs> Now, I don't know this. I don't know this. We've never discussed this. But many times when I duplicate information to someone that a mother will say, it's because it's like mother's intuition. She has mother's intuition. And I'm just grabbing into the universe on a high level of goodness and love. It's because you're, you're young enough that you can unblock that. And I hear, um, do you know Jaime or Harry or ha oh my God, Harry? Harry? Do you know Harry? <laughs> that's, oh, that's your great grandfather. That's, on my, that's on your my great grandpa. Uh -huh. I'm getting definitely your mom's part <laughs> is because you don't know Wonder everybody. Wonder why? <laughs> yeah, and so he's. I feel him as well, and. I feel like there's a car in your family that needs fixing. <laughs> Are you going to get a car? Probably going to get her old car. Her old car <laughs> needs fixing. Yeah, yeah. Your engine light always comes on. No, it's been on for months. Your check engine light. It, I know. it needs fixing. It does. The, the car needs fixing. You don't want to go too far with that car. I know a good place to get your car fixed if you want. They I fix mine all. Okay, okay, good. Anyway, you need to. You need to 
you need to be careful with that car. You need to find out why the light's on. Somebody should at least research why the light's on. I know on. why the light's on. Okay, and good. I know what needs to be fixed. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, so you're going to be 16? Yeah. So you'll be driving? Mm-hmm. Wow. Did you take driver's ed already? Yeah. Wow. Is, is there a gay guy you're friends with? Um, several. <laughs> several. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles. That's true. Um, Does someone want to do a project with you or... Are you thinking of doing your own film, like your own video film, mm -hmm. or doing like, like what was that movie, Witch, whatever? Blair Witch Project? Yeah. Are you thinking of doing something like that? I actually, um, I was going to do, I did a film. And it was sort of a takeoff-ish on that. On the Blair Witch Project? We were going to call it something like that, but we didn't end up calling it that. But, but it was your idea from the Blair Witch Project? Vaguely. It was more horror movie based. But it was horror movie. Yeah. And what happened to that? They vetoed the title because it had the word bitch in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so did you still film it? Yeah, did you show we, it? Yeah, we filmed it and we showed it, and it's the first time I've ever had like my film shown on a big screen. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. are, are you planning to do this again, or why am I seeing this? Um, I think, like, horror movie-wise, it's always been, like, a huge thing with my friends. Like, that's sort of part of our culture is we always get together and film horror movies. I feel like you should do more with this. I feel like there's something there. I feel like it's um, a morsel. I know what it is. What is it? Okay, um, my one of my best friends and I, we've been writing this, it's kind of terrible, but we've been writing this screenplay since we were like nine. Okay. And it's like, we've, it's been sort of like a really long ongoing project. We've never filmed it, but we keep like, I mean, we've bought costumes and we've bought special effects makeup and it's like a whole screenplay and we've gotten all our friends to got, get on board with it and it's... I feel like you should still do something like this. Would you ever like put it on YouTube or... Yeah, I mean, I'd love to actually film it at some point. I feel like you should keep doing this. Because, but I also see that behind, you're probably in front of the scene and behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But you have a good eye behind the scenes with the cameras and telling the cameras what to do with directing. So I, I suggest you pursue that. Is there like a hairy something in there? A hairy dog or a hairy something in that? Um, a hairy something. Somebody with a lot of hair. You uh, don't know what that is. No. Okay. Is there like a coffin in it or a or a walking dead person or a um sort of, yes. Okay. Like some kind of dead monster or something or I don't know. Well, something it's I, I just think I would pursue this if I were you I would keep looking at it so there you go okay thank you thank you uh, thank you so much this it's is fun. my pleasure thank so you sweet. thank you Sonny you were great thank, nice, thank you thank you Sonny thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week on Char Vision